So I've had this thing just drawing things with the ballpoint pen and I made this little mechanism just to keep the pen at a constant pressure. Check that out. Really nice lines. It's very precise. Look at this one. Uh, this one took a while because it was just filling in all those you know darker parts and it was very meticulous this tells me the machine is working well like there's no slippage and there's no noticeable backlash anywhere so my little homemade couplers are working very well alright so now that I have a uh, gotten this out of my system. Uh, it's time to get back to this and install a router. This one's got to stay on the on the router table but eventually I'm gonna get one just like this for the CNC. But I do have this little guy it was like 20 bucks I swear probably less because I usually go uh, to Harbor Freight with a coupon so this was super cheap. I've had it running on my Panto router. I'm just gonna use this to start with and get routing, man. All right, so I got some metal here from the metal farm. I made myself a little shim here with some foam. And I'm just gonna set this and make sure my router is perfectly level. I'm going to take this in this piece of flat bar and join these two together down here. All right, so I cut myself this little piece of metal and I bent it a bit to follow the contour of the router ish you know it's not perfect but all I wanted is to keep it from coming this way Well, that's a really nice fit. So I'm just going to put the nut on here and then weld the other side. All right, there it is. It's in there solid, man. Um, so now I'm just going to build sort of a frame around this and that will be what sits uh, inside the these other rails. So now I'm just going to weld the nut onto here.
I got everything clamped and in position. Everything looks level. Here we go. Let's get this party started. Guys, here's my Arduino Uno, my best friend. I'm gonna flash this with gerbil. I already have the, the, the sketch in my library. <coughs> so let me go here to open recent. And uh, the sketch is called gerbil to Arduino. Now I'm just gonna connect my Arduino via USB. So let's go ahead and upload that. Now that my Arduino is flashed with gerbil, I went ahead and uh, connected my three drivers. And it's one driver per axis. So we're uh, X, Y, Z. These are called EC drivers. They're about $2 a piece. They don't provide much current, so I do sacrifice a bit of uh, speed and torque with these but these can be easily upgraded. My Arduino will be powered with uh, five volts provided from the USB and my three EC drivers uh, will be powered with this uh, 18 volt power supply that I had laying around uh, and that's uh, one amp capacity. Seems to do the job pretty well. I wired my motors with just a Cat5 cable and I'll have to make this one a bit longer but uh, it's all I had laying around and for now it's fine. That Cat5 cable then I converted that back into some stiffer wires that can insert into my breadboard easily. Okay let's power this up. Okay I'm using a browser based G-code sender uh, it's called easel and it's a free program, it's very basic, but you can find that on the Inventables website. We'll click on Easel. And this is made for their the machines that they make, uh, but they communicate to Gerbil. So when this button up here goes green, it means that the machine is connected to the computer and it's everything's good. Now we do have to tweak some settings on the machine in order to calibrate it. Right now it doesn't know how much distance it travels per revolution of the motor, for example. So we're going to specify that. It says the machine is an X-carve, shaped OCO, or a Carvey. It doesn't matter which one I choose. Now I'm going to go to Advanced and open up Machine Inspector. Guys, these are the default settings down here for gerbil. These are not correct for my motors. It doesn't know how much an inch is. It travels a lot less. There's a mathematical way to do this, but I'm not into math. So we're going to do it the hard way. So with the default settings that I have, I want to see what the machine is doing. So I'm going to tell it to travel one inch on my y-axis and we'll see how off we are. Alright, so not even close. It's That's about a third of an inch. This is 250 and it's traveling one third of what it should be, more or less. So what I'm going to do is increase these to 750. Alright, so in order to change these settings down here, I'm going to go to my console. I'm going to do dollar sign zero equals, I'm going to put 750. You press enter, and it seems as if nothing happened, but just bear with me. On my y axis, I'm going to do the same. 
because I'm using the same lead screw. So I'll go up here, I'll do dollar sign one equals 750. And it seems like nothing happened until you refresh this. You can see now it's changed to 750. Okay, let's go back and see if we're in the ballpark. All right, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put one inch here as my step interval. Okay, cool. Well, that's about right. Uh, it may be a little off. Let's check out a longer interval, about five inches. That way it'll be more accurate. Okay, well that seemed to do the job. Now I want to adjust the uh, the z-axis. My z-axis is different because I'm using a different kind of lead screw. It's a lot tighter thread, so it's obviously going to have to spin more to travel the same distance. I'm going to make some marks here on my z-axis every inch. I'm going to tell my z-axis to move up one inch and we'll see how far off we are. Well it traveled a lot less. Um, I'm going to say that's about a fifth of an inch. Let's go back and adjust that. And I think maybe multiplying that times five will get me in the ballpark. 944.88 so Let's just do 945. 945. Alright, let's help to move an inch up. Not quite there. I'm going to try something about like 1100. Okay, so 1100 is close, but it's still a little bit short. I'm going to just try 1150. Okay, well that's pretty good. Well now that my machine is semi-calibrated, these will match up to real life. And let's go ahead and make it do a circle, more or less a, a circle that's uh, 10 inches in diameter. And my cut depth is only going to be uh, 3 thousandths of an inch. I'm not routing anything, I just wanted to make a circle. So all this stuff doesn't really matter. Except I am going to confirm my home position. It's a, it's a new home position. Here we go. I made myself this simple design. Yeah, I know I'm an artist. Save this as it's going to be a SVG file. Now I'm going to go back to my easel. I'm going to bring that file in. Import SVG. There it is. Yeah, so I'm going to make this 4 inches by 4 inches to a depth of uh, a quarter of an inch. And up here I can choose the size of my bit, which is eighth inch. And over here I can also adjust my cut settings. They give you a default or a recommended setting and that's depending on the material that you're using and on the size of the bit, etc. So this is my depth per pass. Uh, so it's going to go around about 10 times uh, to go down to a quarter of an inch. My material dimensions, it really doesn't matter, but just for the hell of it, let's check it out. I just painted this piece of plywood just to give us a, a better um, contrast. It's about 5 by 5 This dotted line up here represents the my material boundaries. Guys, I'm going to use some pressure sensitive tape to hold this down. For now, I'm eventually going to have some clamps and a whole different surface, but for now I just want to get routing. To home the machine, I'm just using this, these controls to bring my bit to the lower left corner. 
and also my Z axis goes all the way down. Once that's done, I'm going to do confirm home position. Okay, that turned out really nice, and yeah, it did go down uh, about a quarter of an inch. Now I want to add a few more things right now that I have this fixed. Put some little circles up here. I'm going to select just the, the figure that I already did and just erase that. Thanks for watching and check out the next episode. I'm gonna have this thing welding, it's gonna be great. Also, I'm gonna run through the list of materials and see exactly how much I spent, and you're gonna be surprised. Thank you, amigos. Adios.